www.ghostbusters.com or by calling 888-253-3139. Coast to coast, direct from Austin. You're listening to the Alex Jones Broadcasting Network. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Welcome to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight filling in for Alex. We have an exciting program today. We're going to be talking to Paul Joseph Watson at the bottom of the hour. We're going to be talking to him about the Ukraine and also about parental rights again in the UK. They are rolling out what we talked about last week when Paul was on with us. We talked about a bill in Scotland that was introduced about a year ago, but it was just passed within the last week or so. And, and what they did was they assigned a government minder to every child at birth. And the government is going to stay there and monitor those children from birth through 18 years of age, always looking over the shoulder of the parents. But what's really troubling about this, of course, is that the assumption is that the government has the interests of the child at heart better than the parents do. That some stranger can do this with several different children better than the parents can, that they should be making the decisions. And of course, we see this happening not just in the UK, but we see this happening in America in court decisions. Just the case that happened last, uh, last week or so in Connecticut, where the parents were given two different diagnoses by two different hospitals. One of them said that her child was sick with a physical problem. The other one said that it was psychological. And they were two very well-known, respected institutions. One was Tufts. The other was Boston's Children's Hospital. And instead of allowing the parents to make the decision, the judge made the decision, took the children away. Well, we see that's happening again now. But in London, the story that Paul Joseph Watson just had today in London, we see the mayor saying that if the children are being radicalized, if maybe they have a philosophy of hate that's being taught to them, then maybe the government should take, step in and take these children away. Now, who defines what radical is? Who defines what hate is? You might think that these are kind of keywords that he's throwing out there, that this is being aimed at the Muslim community, at some radical Muslims in the community. But just remember that in the United States, we've had mainstream Christian groups accused of being hate groups because they support traditional marriage. We've seen the military training against Patriots, people who talk about limited government, people who are conservatives, people who are libertarians, identifying them as dangerous. And we see people singled out in the United States by the military when they have their scenarios because they're gun owners or because they belong to a political party or voted for someone. We see that the fusion centers, the Mayak Fusion Center, targeted people who had voted for Ron Paul or people who had voted for Chuck Baldwin. These are people, if they've got a bumper sticker on their car like that, watch out for them. They're dangerous people. So. How long is it going to be before they start coming after children of people like that? So that's one of the stories we're going to be covering. But, you know, we're going to be talking to Kathleen Willey in the third hour. And if you don't remember her name, she was one of the women that Bill Clinton came after. And uh, it was a very interesting time 20 years ago when this was breaking down. Maybe it was about 15 years ago. It still matters. And it doesn't just matter because Hillary Clinton is going to be running for president, most likely. It matters because character matters. If we don't want character, if we don't want integrity, if we don't care if our chief executive breaks the law, lies under oath, then what we wind up with is we wind up with a situation where we get a president who lies about weapons of mass destruction next. Then we get a president now that is using the IRS and the FBI against his political enemies. We get an FDA that assassinates the character of whistleblowers who are talking about dangerous devices that are being approved by the FDA. Why? Because General Electric has connections with Obama. Jeffrey Immelt is perhaps his favorite CEO, the guy that he continually goes to to talk about jobs and the way things should be run. He gets a pass on taxes, and he seems to get a pass on dangerous devices from the FDA. And when somebody who is a respected radiologist complains about this, the FDA uses NSA type of tactics to come after him. So we're going to be talking to Kathleen Willey live on the phone. We're going to also be taking your calls. Stay tuned. We've got an interesting show. The Ukraine, the FDA, the Clintons, all coming up. Stay tuned. UK, 
We've also got Anthony Gucciardi that's going to be coming on and talking to us about different things that are happening with the FDA. We see a power grab going on with not just the FDA, but also with the FCC. We're going to be talking about that as well. And we have Kathleen Willey. Now, she was one of the ladies who accused Bill Clinton of sexual harassment, and she and the rest of them were vilified by the feminists, by the supporters of Bill Clinton, and by Hillary Clinton. One of the things that Kathleen Willey said about Hillary Clinton is she's orchestrated a terror campaign against every one of these women, including me. Well, we're going to have her in the third hour. She's going to be talking to us about what she's experienced, what she thinks about the Clintons. Uh, I think we kind of know, but we're going to fill in some details there. But look at what is happening in the, U in the Ukraine. We've got Kerry telling Russia, you can't just invade a country on false pretenses. This is a story that's up on Infowars.com right now. This is from uh, Lou Rockwell's blog. Does he see the irony in that? <laughs> you can't just invade a country on false pretenses. Wasn't that the major policy thrust of the Obama administration all last year, trying to invade Syria on a false pretense? And this article points out that in Kiev, the demonstrators are called people power. But in other cities like Donetsk and Sebastopol, they're called armed gunmen. Do you see how that works? If they're fighting for the American government in Syria, Al-Qaeda is called freedom fighters and liberators. But then, of course, they use that to scare us into giving up our liberties that are guaranteed in the Constitution. And many Americans go along with it. A lot of people are waking up to that. Even Rachel Maddow last week was talking about how the FBI has had 150 shooting incidents. And they have investigated them themselves and found that in every one of these, they were absolutely innocent of any wrongdoing. That's a pretty good record, isn't it? Even Rachel Maddow found that hard to believe, just as she also found it hard to believe that Ibrahim Todeshev, someone who knew the Sarnayev brothers, was picked up by the FBI for questioning shot six times and then once in the back of the head for good measure. You know, that's not unrelated to what's going on in the Ukraine right now. We told you at the time that there was a lot of red flags back and forth about the Sarnayev brothers, their involvement in Chechnyan terrorists that had historically been run by the CIA and were possibly being still run by them at the time that the Sarnayev brothers were going back and forth. Russia noticed that this was happening and sent some inquiries to the U.S. saying, uh, do you guys know that these guys are affiliated with terrorists here in Chechnya? As a way, I think really more than anything of, of letting them know, we know that you're sending these guys back and forth. And of course, Uncle Ruslan, who helped to forward the narrative of the false flag that was going with the Boston bombing, Uncle Ruslan was married to the daughter of the CIA head in that region. So there was a lot of going back and forth with Chechen and terrorists. And we even see now people in the West are calling on the Chechen Osama bin Laden to get involved in the Ukraine to do something. They're inciting him to try to riot. I think it's interesting that when all of this stuff started happening, that Russia leaked to the press here in the U.S. the fact that these Sarnayev brothers had been going back and forth and that they were linked to CIA-supported terrorists in the Russian area. I think that was a way of essentially throwing a, a, a shot across the bow of the CIA as well as also criticizing the CIA. You know, Russia's got its own agenda. Outlets like RT have their own agenda. You can trust them to tell the truth about what's going on in the U.S. You can't necessarily trust them to tell you the truth about what's going on in Russia. They're going to sugarcoat it, just like CNN sugarcoats what Obama does. But they might point out the corruption that's going on in the Ukraine we try to point out both sides of that. We don't have a dog in this pony. We don't work for either one of these governments. We're not like CNN. We're not like RT. And so we're going to try to tell you what we see as honestly as we can. But it's very difficult to understand what's going on there. Putin is saying that he's not going to stop at the Crimea. This is another article uh, that's up on Infowars today. It's from CNS News. Uh, you know, he was threatened when he didn't play along with our agenda, I should say, the Obama regime's agenda in Syria, he was threatened that something might happen during the Olympics, that Prince Bandar said he might not be able to control, uh, he could guarantee that, that nothing would happen with terrorists, according to a Muslim news agency that reported this. Uh, that's the only source we have for that story, but supposedly he was threatened about that. Well, what actually happened was we saw this revolution going on right at the doorstep of Russia. Many would argue that Ukraine has is really actually a part of Russia. They see themselves differently. 
But we have to remember that that the UK has been fighting against even old imperial czarist Russia. Remember the Crimean War? Remember the charge of the light brigades, half a league, half a league onward, you know, into the Valley of Death Road, the, what was it, 500? I don't remember the poem exactly. That was the Crimean War. We had a lot of metaphors that came out of that. That was the British Empire attacking the Russian czars over the Crimea. The Crimea is very important to Russia strategically, militarily, economically. It's not something that NATO and the U.S. can just come in and make demands about without expecting to see something happening there. So what we're seeing is a brinksmanship that really kind of borders on what we saw with the Cuban Missile Crisis. Very troubling to see what's happening with this. This is a very dangerous game that John Kerry and Obama are playing. We're going to be talking to Paul Joseph Watson about this in more detail at the bottom of the hour. I just want to run through some of the news stories that have come out over the weekend. This one had a real personal uh, effect for me. At least 28 dead, 109 injured after a gang of knife-wielding.